What's going on guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope everyone's doing really well. And this video, I wanted to do something a, a little bit different. And um, I wanted to sort of talk with you guys through how I came about actually being an artist. I mean, I get messages on a daily basis from people saying, how did you turn into an artist? What were the steps that you took? Um, it's so great that you're you're carrying on and pursuing your passion and I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight into sort of how how I came about becoming an artist and what I was doing before. So for those of you guys who don't know me, uh, my name is Rajan Seth. Um, I'm a professional artist, a professional abstract artist I should say. Um, I've now been painting professionally for just over three years, I'd say. Um, and prior to painting, I was actually an accountant working in London. I was a very bad accountant working in London, I should say. And it was something that I found extremely draining, being in a job and a profession that I knew wasn't quite right for me. I went down the route of accountancy to try and keep my parents happy. Uh, but ultimately, I knew deep down that I was always quite a creative person. So with the opportunity, you know, with social media being so amazing these days to, to grow your own business, to start something new, I set up my Instagram page around three years ago and I started posting pictures, one after the other, one after the other. And I, I to be honest, I didn't expect anything to really happen. And in the first sort of five to six months, nothing did happen. And that's okay. It's okay for you guys to to realize that these things take time just as I did. Um, if you're somebody who's looking to, you know, potentially pursue painting as a full time job, which is what I'm doing now, you know, I can pay my bills with painting and I can essentially turn my passion into what pays for my life and my family's life, which is unbelievable. But starting off as an artist, it wasn't quite like this. And there were many times where I thought, you know, why am I doing this? Should I even bother? Should I carry on? And it's looking back, you know, it's those times where you really you you come up you come up against it in in your own mind, and you're always sort of questioning questioning yourself: Should I do this, or should I not do this? My honest opinion is that for anyone who's a creative, um, I genuinely believe that there's a market out there for everybody. Um, I believe that whatever art or creativity or whatever your passion is, you can turn it into your paycheck. You just need to find the right people who are going to appreciate the work that you do. That's the struggle. Um, with Instagram, when I started out, as I was saying, I was posting, you know, once a day, something like that, a few stories. And I didn't really expect anything to come of it. Um, but over time, over, with consistency, continuous posting, um, things have, have, have really changed in my life. So since I pursued my passion in abstract painting, you know, I've learned so much, my techniques, my tools, my materials. Um, I have now have a professional framer who does my, does my canvases and my, and my framing. But um, it wasn't always like that. And I think if you're just starting out as an artist, sometimes it can be really difficult to know what exactly to do to find your niche but what you should really do is have a good solid sort of grounding of the basic principles of whatever art you want to go into. So, you know, for me as an abstract painting, I get messages from thousands of people saying, how do you achieve this effect? How do you achieve that, that effect? How did you do the texture? And it all comes back to the same, same thing. I built up through trial and error, through the years of painting that I've been doing, and it extends more than just three years when I started Instagram. You know, I was 15, 16 when I first started out actually painting. At school, I remember it was my only thing that I looked forward to was going was going into the art studio and um, just being as creative as possible. And if you're someone like me who loves abstract painting, then uh, I'll be releasing some, some new content in the form of a course coming up next month, which is really something amazing for you guys to see because it will save you so much time you know, I used to trawl through YouTube trying to find the right styles, how to learn this, how to learn that. But ultimately, and if someone can teach it to you uh, in a precise course, which is dedicated to exactly what you want to learn, in my case, abstract painting, and, and hopefully in your case as well, then it's going to save you so, so much time. So I would highly encourage you to 
Um, stay away from YouTube. I know YouTube is amazing. And of course, I'm posting on YouTube right now. But in terms of learning, um, as a professional artist now, looking back, I think YouTube wasn't the right way for me to go about things. And I've learned that the hard way. But fortunately, with the course that I'm going to be le releasing, um, you guys can sign up and you can have a look at the material I'm going to be releasing in the coming weeks if it's something that's going to be going to be right for you. Since I started painting, I have been in Vogue magazine three times. My artwork's been shown there, which has been an amazing thing for me because it's really helped to build up my my credibility as an artist and people take me you know, more seriously than if I was to just carry on posting on Instagram and things like that, which has been amazing. I've completed commissions for celebrities, for interior designers, for footballers. The, the thing that I'm most proud of is being represented by galleries. I'm represented by two different galleries, one in Chelsea in the heart of London and the other one, which is a little bit outside London. But it's great to have that presence, you know, across the UK, not just in London. So, uh, you know, as an artist, it's really important to try and get representation from a gallery if it's possible. So now I'm, I'm fully self-sufficient. I sell my paintings uh, on a regular basis to clients around the world. I mean, I sell to, to New York, to, to Miami, to, to LA. And then on the other side, I sell to Hong Kong, to Singapore. And it's just amazing how this has all come about uh, because I started up in Instagram and was able to just be continuous in what I was doing, not get bogged down when people weren't responding to me. And yeah, so things have massively changed. And now as an artist, I can pick and choose the day that I like, um, you know, whether I want to wake up and go into the studio and create something or whether I feel like having a day off and spending some time with my family and doing something to support my wife's business. I'm actually in my wife's boutique at the moment filming, um, so I'm able to help her out. And it's just an amazing life to have that kind of balance where I can choose what I want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So so what would be my advice to, to you guys? Um, if you're starting out, I'm going to take the example of like you're sort of starting out and, and wishing to, to become an artist. What were the things that I would, I would say to you to do now, looking back and having been through all these sort of experiences? I would definitely say to find a niche in what you're doing. I'm an abstract painter who focuses working on metallics and texture. And those are the sort of the key points to my work. I like to work with those two things and evolve them over time because they're the things that I'm interested in. I think sometimes as an artist, you can maybe spread yourself a little bit too, too thin across the board where you try to do everything, but actually end up not being particularly good at anything. So I would encourage you to find a niche in, in, in whichever way um, you see fit. And I would encourage you to experiment because sometimes I think it's very hard to grow as a person and grow as an artist if you're sort of doing the same things day in, day out. My work, obviously I work with metallics and I work with texture, but I also experiment working with different paints, different modeling pastes, different mediums. Maybe I will try painting uh, on a wooden board as, as opposed to a normal canvas. And then the paints, you know, whether you use oil paint, whether you use acrylic paint, whether you use inks, whether you use watercolor, I think you need to have that um, ability to be flexible in whatever you're doing. And that's gonna be really important in helping you guys find your niche. So try and be as open as possible to, to trying new things. And so going back to what are the other things that I, I I would recommend to you to do on a day to day basis? Uh, sometimes when you don't have any artwork on or you don't have any commissions on, you can get a bit bogged down with things. And don't 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 for one second think that I'm continu continuously working on paintings. I actually spend a lot of my time doing admin things much more than you guys probably think. I probably say being in a studio makes up maybe 10 percent of my overall time during a week not only painting in the studio, but also replying to people and trying to get new business because in the world which is growing and moving so fast, you you can't just be stuck in your own sort of studio in your own little world. You need to get your work out there in, in different kind of places to to really see the growth happening. You need to, as I say, kind of plant seeds in different places. 
I'd be lying if I said that my inspiration comes solely from me. You know, my inspiration comes from ev absolutely everything and anything. And it could be something as simple as, as looking at the flowers uh, on here and looking at the different colours and how they all interact with each other and the different textures. And I can think about how I can incorporate it into my work. And now in the commissions that I work with, I'm able to offer not just an abstract painting, but also home in on a specific style or find a way to incorporate something that's a bit more meaningful in the commission, you know, whether it's a stencil of, of something that's really important to the client or whether it's the whether it's the movement in the painting. There's many different ways that you can kind of tailor your work to to making sure that it stays up to date and and to relevant uh, and to relevant and relevant in the, um, in today in today's very competitive art market. Being able to pay the bills and live a live a good sort of solid life, being able to pay your mortgage and being able to have fun and um, I just want to share that sort of experience with with you guys as well and and make sure that you know if you do have a passion for art which is why I assume you, you would be following the channel or maybe you you want to take up learning art or maybe you want to um, take it up as a hobby or maybe even as a career then absolutely do it because it is something that's very fulfilling when you get to the point where you're able to to live off doing something that you love with your, your own style. You just need to find it, and work hard, keep experimenting. I know it's difficult. And the most important thing is to stay positive because it can be hard as an artist. We've all been there when we're not, we don't have any work or not enough work. And we're thinking, you know, how are we going to pay our next bill? Um, if you're an artist like me who relies solely on the income of um, selling my artwork, then it can be difficult at times to 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 see when the next painting's coming in. But as long as you stay motivated and true to yourself, then I'm sure over time things will really work out. I just want to say thank you so much for everyone to watching this video. I know it's something a little bit different and um, not my usual time lapse or showing you how I, how I paint in the studio. But it's something a bit more insightful and I think it's really relevant to you guys to know um, a bit more about how to or my opinion on how to become a successful artist. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please do leave a comment and a like. And as always, um, subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.